<clears throat> John chapter 16. These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. What things? Talk about they're going to be persecuted. They're going to have a comforter. they got to be part of the vine of Christ. These things are not to be offensive. Now, if somebody comes up to you and is offended because you do what the Bible tells you to do, they stand on unsound ground, not you. Scripture with Scripture, you do what God tells you to do, and people come looking at you like, remember there's two sides. There's the worldly side, and there's God's side. Now, if you're, if you're doing a, a ministry that's not God-approved, you're with the world. That... They should not be offended. In what? Persecutions come in the book of Acts. Don't give up. They shall be they shall put you out of the synagogues. Number one, get out. Peter and either James or John in the book of Acts, before the council, twice. Don't preach that man's name and don't come back to the temple. That blind man, his his parents didn't want to be left out of the temple. They cast him out of the temple. This happens today in 2016 for a Jew that believes on Jesus Christ. They are ostracized from their family. They will, I've been told by a Jewish person, your family or his family will have a mock funeral. And if you work in a Jewish store or Jewish business, you no longer work. You know why they were collecting money in Jerusalem for the saints in Jerusalem? Because they had no more jobs. They had no more houses. Yay. Isn't that great? You shall be put out of the synagogues. Yay. Boy, the sense of humor that Jesus has. Jesus said when you're pulled out of those synagogues, yay. That's what he thinks of the religious people. The time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think they have done God's service. Book of Mark Fox's Book of Martyrs. Many of those people who killed Christians, true Christians, believe they did it in God's service. Even Paul did. Even Paul. That's what Paul's whole thing of the chap Acts chapter 9. He had a zeal for God. And you know what? According to the law, he was doing right, but we're no longer under the law. When that woman comes up to you and she blasts you for your ministry, she thinks she's backing up God. And these things will they do unto you. <clears throat> Don't get offended. These things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Now, when I preach on the streets, I'm going to preach the gospel, but I'd love to pull this verse out on these people that come up to me. Yeah, you won't get them angry. You know what? I'm there for the gospel. They need the gospel. But I look at that person and say, you don't know God and you don't know Jesus. And they'll sit there, oh, I know Jesus. Blah, blah, blah. Jesus would not do what you do. And lady, I know by your own comments that you never read your Bible. Or you've got a fairy tale, fluffy, flowered, penny race Jesus. That all the Samson. Are you trying to tell me Samson was a panty waist, little whippy kind of guy? That guy tore a lion in, into two. You trying to tell me David was a whip? He battled a bear and a lion in one afternoon. Are you telling me Jesus is a fairy tale whip when that guy climbed mountains in one afternoon? You trying to tell me those four fishermen were just, you know. You know, wimpy, wimpy guys. Man, I bet you it had muscles carrying all those nets. They didn't have machinery. But these things have I told you. And when that, when the time shall come, book of Acts, ye may remember that I told you of them. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. These things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. I'm going away. You know, God is so impressive. He will warn you before judgment and tribulation comes. It won't be, oh my God, here it happens. No, never. 
Listen, that woman who gets impregnated by whoever could be the father, she has enough knowledge to know it can happen. And boom, one, okay, now here comes the pregnancy. <gasps> you cannot open a pack of cigarettes without having a heart attack that the doctor said, hey, you got a lung condition. Surgeon General warned you. You cannot open up a, a, a beer or a keg of beer without having it known that your liver can be shot because it says it right there in the cans now. It can't be a shock when the judge proclaims that you are now going to jail because you drunk and drive. It's all over the place. Don't drink and drive. It's not a shock that, oh, I killed a family in my car because I'm texting and driving. You've been warned. And just because you don't like the preacher and the message that he preaches and the way he preaches it, the way the Bible tells me to preach it, when you end up in hell, you've been warned. Amen. You get these people, and I've heard of them. These hurricanes, we just had a hurricane come through. You get these people, they have their hurricane parties on the beach and then they're swept away forever. You were warned. You know it's bad. Everybody in the community is gone but you. The nut. Okay? Some people stayed, yeah, but you're the nut that was out on the beach. Oh, insurance company, I live in California. <coughs> we had this earthquake, and my house is now at the bottom. Didn't the odds tell you building that house on the side of a mountain was wrong? Wasn't it? You are warned by God, by, by God sending preachers. You are warned by the natural part of human life that you don't do certain things. But now I go my way to him that sent me, Acts chapter 1. And none of you ask me, whither goest thou? Oh, but you ask it, who, who's the greatest? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your hearts. When somebody you've walked with three and a half years say, I'm going away, I'm not coming back, when that start, it'll start in your heart. A spouse, a child, a co-worker. I've been working all these years with you, you're going to retire. Man, it, it brings tears. It brings sadness. It's empty. Nevertheless, ooh, nevertheless. That's an important word, nevertheless. I tell you the truth. He can't lie. He's God. The Bible says, as far as God, he cannot lie, he will not lie, and he's unable to lie. So here is God, I tell you the truth. Jesus said in chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm going to tell you the truth, boys. I'm not going to lie to you. It's expedient. It's very helpful for you that I go away. So it's helpful for me that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father today. He's preparing a home. He's making intercession. He's going to, again, he's going to talk about that comforter. We've got to live our life by faith to prove to people that there is a God. The only way they're going to see Jesus in your life is you live by faith and live by what he tells you to do. And you be that oddball. And that will stand for a testimony against him. Why else would anybody get in the street corners and just start preaching? Which the Bible says the preaching is foolish. And yet the message is necessary. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, if Jesus was still living today, the Comforter will not come unto you. So if the, Jesus did not in, is not seated at the right hand of the Father today, I would not have the Holy Spirit. Now this would be kind of bad because if I wanted to be a born-again Bible-believing Christian, I would have to go to Jerusalem and live with Jesus. And Jesus would tell me, Mark 16, you need to go in all the world and preach the gospel. Well, how am I going to do that, Jesus, if you don't come with me to North America? That's a little trouble, isn't it? 
Jesus couldn't follow the apostles in the book of Acts everywhere he went, could he? Absolutely not. Paul went. Look, look at Paul's missionary maps. Don't you realize that Peter and, and, and John went about their missionary trips all over? What are you going to do? Slice Jesus up in a little Jesus parts? Carry him in a little box? No, you can't. Yeah, but if we get that Holy Spirit, the comforter in, that's the way Jesus can go with us all. Listen, I've got the same Holy Ghost that the Holt's got over in Africa. I've got the same Holy Ghost that dwells in me that are missionaries in Poland. There, I've got the same Holy Ghost that's in the Holy Ghost in the Congo. I've got the same Holy Ghost in the ones in Thessalonica and over the whole world. You can't do that with Jesus. Let me be reverent. But let me be holy to Jesus. If you could have Jesus here physically, he can't go with all of us. It's impossible. If Jesus was here in a church in Florida, and you would say, hey, Jesus, you're calling me to go to another land. Yes. He can't go with you, or he's got to leave your church. What's it going to be? So when he leaves, he gives us the indwelling spirit, the Holy Spirit that dwells in all believers' hearts. The world cannot receive this comforter. So we do have a unity in Christ, the Holy Spirit. And we've already read from the previous two chapters that Holy Spirit is going to remind us and he's going to teach us. Well, it'd be kind of hard for Jesus to teach me and the people here at Daytona Beach about salvation if he's living in Jerusalem right now. It'd be kind of hard. Because I guarantee they would not give Jesus television time or radio time. Yeah. Because they don't want it in Daytona Beach. I don't know how many years we've been there. They don't want Jesus. So the Holy Spirit that indwells in all of us. I work 12 miles from my home. Sorry, hon. I got to go to work. I'm taking Jesus with me. Have, have a good day without God. Impossible. But if my wife saved, she's saved, and I'm saved, and I'm saved, that Holy Spirit dwells between both of us. Whether I go 12 miles away or I go five minutes away, we've got the same Holy Spirit. My wife would fight. No, you leave Jesus home today. It's going to be a bad day. No, he's got to go with me. I'm the husband. I'm in charge of his family. It's God, Jesus Christ, and the husband. Sorry, dear. No. See? So while the husband's away, and the wife said, she, she's got a bad day. Everything's just breaking out, just kind of trouble. She's got the same comforter that I can have sitting at my desk. Oh, man, these customers are driving me nuts. And Holy Spirit at the same time could be working with my wife at home, cheering her up, and he could be working with me to calm down. You're just as much as bad as they are. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. You are reaping what you're sowing, brother. See how the Holy Spirit works in us? Now tell me, how can Jesus, if he was living right now, be 12 miles away? He can't. If you did have a Jesus 12 miles away, the Bible says that one of them would be an Antichrist. Paul said there are other Jesuses. You don't want another Jesus. So do you see where idolatry and statues of Jesus don't work? You can't have a statue of Jesus here and a statue of Jesus there and a statue of his mother over there that don't work. You need the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does not go with idolatry. When, my, when you as a husband and wife depart because of work, you're saved. There's no departing. Especially if the rapture would happen that afternoon. He's going to send them throughout the whole world in the book of Acts. Well, he can't do that with them. Each individually. I mean, if he were to pop up as a human to Paul on the road of Damascus, how's he going to pop up for Philip going to the Ethiopian eunuch? Oh, he could, he could, look how quick he moved. Yeah, but the book of Acts moves Gentiles. The signs will start disappearing. Jesus is not going to do a sign to an Ethiopian eunuch. He's a Gentile. He's showing up reading the Bible, not signs. Did you get that? So, I, 
If I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. There you go. So it's a speeding. It is helpful that we get the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is for a help. So when you feel helpless, turn to the Holy Ghost. Say, Mr. Holy Ghost, Jesus sent you to comfort. I need comfort. Now, do I preach on the street? I'm talking about my ministry. You knock on, whatever you do, God approve. Do I preach on the street? Absolutely not. What comes out of my mouth? Air. Now, I can speak fleshy. I can tell jokes and gag just as much as the next guy. That's fleshy. But if I stand with a Bible in hand and I preach the gospel and the word of God and weigh the Holy Spirit and weigh God and Jesus approves for salvation, watch this. And when he, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, is come, he will reprove the world of sin. Why do you speak about sin when you're preaching? That's not me. That's the Holy Ghost. You're not mad at me. You're not mad at my tone. You're sure not mad at my volume. You are angry with the Holy Spirit with me. Say, God, you gave him lungs. Let me use them. Okay, go for it. You know, these people don't realize that my voice can be heard around the whole entire area where I preach. There are people that sit by the water. There are people coming out of the library. There are people over fishing. See, they think it's just the farmer's market, but God's given me a voice that can go all around. See, they come right up. Oh, you're too loud. It may not be for you this afternoon. So, when you're dealing with somebody about sin, the world, you better have the right spirit, the Holy Spirit of God in you. Because another spirit will not reprove the world, it will boast of sin. Yeah, you see how much we had to drink this weekend? Wow, man, I can't believe you ended up with that girl. How did it go? Oh, man. I left the family all weekend. I went, you know. Today I preached about sinners. Sin. We're sinners. That came from the Holy Spirit. And of righteousness. What must I do about my sin? You need to get righteous. Well, how do I get righteous? Receiving Christ's righteousness, believing on Jesus Christ as your Savior. There is no righteousness in you, for there is none good. No, not one. All have sinned and come to short of glory of God. And of judgment. I have had Christians tell me you ought not preach hell. You ready for this? You just told the Holy Spirit to shut up. And I hope those Christians hear this message. Judgment. What is the judgment of God? Come on. Upon the world with sin. Or go to hell. And when you tell a Christian that's preaching the gospel according to the Holy Spirit, what Jesus said, red-lettered Bible, you say, you ought not to preach about hell. You just told the Holy Spirit to me, shut up. I don't care how righteous you are. How dare you tell the Holy Spirit to shut up? Well, I told you to shut up, Silent. No, 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 no. You're telling the Holy Spirit. Because if you were to come up unto me when I preach on the street, and if you were to speak to my flesh alone, if my flesh and the whole and the spirit would separate from themselves for a minute, and you went up to the flesh and say, Flesh is Silent, how do you feel about this preaching? I absolutely hate it. I want to get out of here. I'm gonna kill that. I'm sick of this. This is ridiculous that he's making me do this. And you walk up to the Holy Spirit inside of me and say, Holy Spirit, what do you feel about Stalin doing? Man, we just love it. I wish he'd give me more time. When you pass out that gospel track, the word of God, you're doing it by the Holy Spirit. Your flesh is relieving yourself in the bathroom. Let the Spirit work by leaving a gospel track behind on the toilet dispenser.
It's a long one. Do what a friend of mine did on a power plant. He would unroll the toilet paper, slide the track, and then neatly roll the toilet paper back up. You don't know who was going to get that track. How many uh, patches of toilet paper would get to that track? You can take care of the flesh and the spirit at the same time. Imagine someone getting saved because you took a little time in the bathroom. See, there's a spirit that can work. That Ethiopian eunuch was reading the word of God. He had to get that from somebody, didn't he? And he was reproved of sin. And he wanted to know how to be righteous. And he did not want to go to hell. And he ended up getting saved and going home and telling other people. Be careful what you tell a preacher of the word of God what to do and what not to do. By the way, this goes for your pastor too, you know. If your pastor is preaching the word of God the way he's supposed to be preaching, and you walk up, pastor, you shouldn't have a message like that, you're telling the Holy Spirit inside your pastor, shut up. And by the way, you're, you are trying to sear your conscience now that the Holy Spirit's working on to tell the pastor or the man of God to shut up. I don't want to hear that no more. Well, maybe the Holy Spirit will turn himself off in you, turn off the light, and let you live in darkness. Works both ways. Of sin. All right, we're going to define what we said in eight. Because they believe not on me. That is a deadly verse for a preacher, of evangelist, of a missionary. There are people you will tell about sin, they won't believe, and it will be because they don't believe the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. They're not rejecting you. Don't you get up? Then you say, don't get offended that they're not listening. They're, it's not they're not listening to you. They're not listening to the Holy Spirit and me that sent the Holy Spirit, that God approved of the Holy Spirit. It's us. Get off your high tower. Not everybody's going to be saved. There are passages in the Bible that Jesus died for many. It doesn't say all. Well, isn't that a contradiction for God so loved the world? Yeah, many. Christ died for all. Many will many will not believe. Few will believe. So they've got to know about sin so they can reject God. How's that one? I am called by God in the ministry he's given me to proclaim sin. So when they do reject God, God will stand them out and say, you heard that man mention sin. He didn't bring up Santa Claus. He didn't bring up chocolate bunnies. He didn't bring up flowers. That guy said sin. That guy said every week, if you reject Christ and will not receive him as your sin atonement, you're going to hell. That's what he said every week. Well, we didn't like him. Well, guess what? He ain't got that body no more. He's no more in that flesh no more. He's got a 100% body, brand new body that's whole, and he had the Holy Spirit that was in him. I approved of that message. And it wasn't a political message. Imagine God saying what a preacher says, and he says at the, at the, at the bottom of the TV screen, I approve of that message. And imagine God telling you to go to hell. I don't like that. Of righteousness. Okay, of righteousness because I, Jesus, go to my Father. So see, you got to have Jesus' righteousness that went to the Father. Can you mention a Jesus that did not go to the Father? I can tell you many of them. I can tell you Jesus right now is not the Father. He's in a box in every church ready to be dined. I can tell you Jesus that went to North America. I can tell you Jesus that is not God. I can tell you Jesus is that a pre preacher of, of a goat used to get your wife and your daughter impregnated. I can get you a Jesus that said, "Here, drink my Kool Aid." I can get a Jesus here. Let's get a let's get a tattoo on my forehead and worship me, and an actress. All those Jesuses are not going to the Father. And sending the Holy Ghost. And Paul says, there's another Jesus. 
if your Jesus is not sitting at the Father right now, today, and approved by the Holy Spirit, the Comforter come into the believer's heart, that's not the right Jesus. you got to have Christ righteous. You're going to walk up to God and God's going to say, how and why should I let you into heaven? Jesus Christ. Yeah, and what else? His blood paid my sins. And the only right I have is your son, God. That's it. Come on in. You're not going to walk up to God and say, why should I let you in heaven? I'm a good person. There is none good. Go to hell. I went to church. Gabriel, you want to find that one in the book somewhere? No, it's not there. Go to hell. Father, my righteousness, I don't understand it, but I believe Jesus did something for everything for me to ever be done. Good enough. Come on in. Why should I let you in, into heaven? What, what righteousness do you have? I came to a place called Calvary, and your son died and bled there for me. He is not in that tomb they buried him in. That's the gospel, God. That's the only thing I know. Well done. Come on in. Well, Mary. <laughs> Sorry. Jesus came over to us in North America. <laughs> All them. Son, come here for me. Did you? Fit? No, I didn't. I left Jerusalem, came right to you. I didn't make no pit stops. You got to have Christ's righteousness. Because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. That's funny because he didn't appear to any of them anymore. He appeared to Paul and that was it. Nowhere did Peter, James, and John and, and the eleven saw him anymore. And yet one day the Bible says, Paul says later on, we're going to see him. And before we see him, do you realize those 11, 12, Count and Paul, are going to see each other again before we see Jesus in the clouds? And then we're going to see Jesus again. The risen Savior, glorified by God, seated at the right hand of God, Jesus. Of judgment. Because the prince of this world is judged. Satan. Upon the cross and the empty tomb, Satan was judged. He is damned forever, not man. So when you say Satan rules whatever you do, you're following a loser. I have yet many things to say unto you. But ye cannot bear them now. Who's going to bear them before him? Who's going to write Acts, Ephesians, Philippians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians? The Holy Spirit's going to write that. Isn't the Holy Spirit the writer? To, God used man. Yeah, God used man. Man is the pen. The ink is the Holy Spirit. How be it? When he... The spirit of truth. Look at that. So when I say, when Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, I am also speaking about the spirit. It is come. Well, he can't come to after Jesus comes and goes to the Father. <clears throat> he will guide you in all truth. So when somebody falls for a cult, a false religion, or science is that the Holy Spirit absolutely not according to this verse when you fall for an occult you've done it against the Holy Spirit if you're saved and there are many saved people get involved in in cults and they're allowed to, to be put in the cults because they tell the Holy Spirit get out of here Imagine doing something against the Spirit. Now, the Bible says you can grieve the Spirit. There's three of them. You can grieve the Spirit. You can resist the Spirit. And there's something else I can never remember. So I watch this, Pentecostals. For he shall not speak of himself. 
The Holy Spirit is not coming to us so he can get the glorification. Absolutely not. So in order to receive the Holy Spirit, you guys speak in tongues and be, that's not the Holy Spirit speaking. That's another spirit that Paul speaks about. So, <coughs> the Holy Spirit, the Bible, will not give himself credit. Matter of fact, he won't even want himself to be known. He does not want any hymns sung about him, by the way. To the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, he is only to train us, to guide us into truth, and to remember Jesus Christ and teach others. But whatsoever he shall whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit works with revelations and prophecy. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. It's all about Jesus. And when you take Jesus out of the Holy Spirit worship, you ain't got the right spirit. Absolutely not. There's no word told in church age, speak in tongues and whatever you do. Let your flesh go. Doesn't that tell you already what Paul tells us? The flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit is against the, the flesh. So you got a non-Holy Spirit. And what's one of the revelations of things to come? If you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, get saved, you're going to hell. Christian, if you don't do what the Bible tells you what to do, you're going to lose crowns and rewards. All things that the Father has are mine. Oh, look at that. Therefore say I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. <clears throat> A little while, he shall not see me, less than a week. And again, a little while, and you shall see me. Three and a half, three days, three nights. Because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he says unto us, A little while, and he shall not see me. Again, a little while, and he shall see me. And because I go to the Father. They didn't get it. Then said therefore. They said therefore. What? Wait a minute. Where am I? 18. They said therefore. What is this that he saith a little while? We cannot tell what he saith. Now when Jesus knew they were. Der, 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 I can never say. Darius to ask him. And said unto him. Desire. Do ye inquire amongst yourselves of that I said, a little while, ye shall not see me. Again, a little while, ye shall see me. Jesus was not the kind of person you want to be around if you did not want to speak up and ask the question. If you didn't want to ask the question, he'll ask it for you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, this is important, gentlemen, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. Ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. When he died, when he's persecuted and he's dying on that cross, the world is rejoicing. They walk off Calvary's hill. Yes, he's dead. Let's go get some lamb chops. The the apostles or the disciples or the women are. Man, they're crying. They're upset. Oh, but the joy comes when Mary says, I seen an angel. He's not here. He's risen. The joy is when they're in that upper room and Jesus walks through the door and Thomas takes his finger. No, I believe. There's joy in there, isn't there? Now, when Peter and John are preaching through the streets of Jerusalem, that council, that Jewish council said, don't you preach that man's name here anymore. They're upset. 
Peter and John get whipped, and they're, they're walking away. We got the joy, joy, joy down deep in our heart. A woman, when she is travail, has sorrow. Now, this is always a reference to the tribulation. You want to know how hard it is for a woman to give birth to a child? God likes it to the most greatest judgment ever upon this earth. The tribulation period. Now, I would think that is really, really extreme pain. That he did not give in charge of man because man would drive the woman crazy to get to give birth. A man drives his wife crazy when he's got the, the sniffles and a cold or a flu. I can imagine if he were to carry the baby for nine months. Nine and a half minutes later, he'd be complaining because he's getting thrown up and everything. But Usually the woman is travailed with sorrow is likened to the tribulation period. Revelation 12. Looking for a note here. Genesis 3.15. Oh, we're going back to the prophecy, aren't we now? Isn't it wonderful how he said a woman has travailed with sorrow? What did he tell Eve? Who was the two people he was speaking about when he had a conversation with Eve? Jesus, if you did not see it, ran to Genesis 3.15 and said, this is prophecy. This is when I had a conversation with our grandma, Eve. With Grandpa Adam. You know, I got to wonder, can you grow anything today on Mount Calvary with the blood of Jesus Christ being spilt on that ground? Adam. How's your head feel, Satan? We're back in Genesis 3. Because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of a child, she remembers no more the anguish. For a joy of man is born into the world. In Revelation 12. Whoever that child is. Isaiah 26, 16. I don't know who that child is in Revelation 12. But that woman gives birth to a man. Ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice. And your joy no man taketh, taketh from you. And in that day. You shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask in the, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, He will give it to you. Now you know how this verse is not name it, claim it. Do you remember two disciples asking for Jesus something and they could not get it? We read tonight, and I, I I'm glad this came up because I read it. Wait a minute. James and John said, Jesus, can we sit on the left hand or right hand of the Father? Jesus, didn't you say whatever the Father we ask will give it to you? And Jesus said, sorry, you can't get that. So you can't go to these passages and name it, claim it. James and John tried it, and they didn't get it. Scripture with Scripture. Scripture with Scripture. And the Bible doesn't contradict. That means there's another, there's another doctrinal statement that goes with what's being said and you're taking it outside the box you're being thinking of yourself so he says in in my name he will give it to you well not that position james and john so that must be out of that scope they're going into a period called the book of acts the acts of the apostles they're going to need some help from god there's some serious situations rising at God. What do we do? Gentiles are getting saved. What do we tell them? We don't tell them go under the law. We can't do that no more. God, we need something. Peter, I want you to go to an Italian's house where they're going to have dogs and pork. Oh, no, no, Lord, not me. Yes, Peter. Uh, God, I'm going to need some help. I know you're going to need help. I'll tell you how I give help. You don't listen. Peter did not believe that whole thing in Cornelius' house. Come on, he didn't. 
you know the scripture because then God says Holy Spirit yes you got to prove this to Peter make them talk in tongues and the Gentiles talked in tongues and Peter's like God is here read it Acts chapter 10 at that moment they speak tongues to the Jewish man that brought Jesus okay I'm sorry for arguing with God you're correct see the apostles needed help they need a prayer line with God beyond all prayer lines that I don't need today because I have a completed Bible Peter could not stand up in a congregation in his church say open up the first main James couldn't say, all right, people, open up to my book, chapter 2. Shall we all open up Matthew's gospel? They couldn't do that. They needed God's help. That's the prayer line. God, I mean, we were happy we were beaten for your namesake, but, you know, that hurt. Remember, guys, remember what happened to me. Oh, okay. Remember the Holy Spirit working in them? What happened to Jesus? Oh. Okay, yeah. What happened to Jesus? John was there with Mary. He saw how beatered and battered Jesus was. And he would probably take him Peter off saying, Peter, you know, I, 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 you won't believe what Jesus looked like on that cross. Let's just take the joy and go off and preach more. Okay. Here... Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Look at that. God wants you to have joy. But he's not going to give you something that's going to make you unjoyful and harmful. Your six-year-old son comes up and says, Dad, I want to use a razor. No. You'll kill yourself. God wants you to have joy by your prayer life, but you've got to ask proper things. What would be a joy that God would give you? The ability to try to win souls. That would be joyful in what? All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer. God, wait a minute. That's not joy. I'm not getting persecuted. I'm getting persecuted. I'm not getting joy. Wait till you come home. Wait till you come home, prodigal son. And then I show you the party that I will throw for you. Oh, uh, that one. Get the ring. Get the shoes. Get the slipper. Kill the fatted calf. Now rejoice. I'd rather have eternal joy than temporal joy. And yes, God will give you temporal joy. Amen. Glory to God. But all that live godly in Christ Jesus. There's persecution. We've been reading it in the last few chapters. Can you imagine when you count all the souls of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, how many people's gotten saved since their ministry? Don't you think that would be a joy for them? At least every soul in 2016 on October 15th today has been saved by one of those 12 apostles. At least. Somewhere along the line, we can trace our salvation heritage not only to jesus christ but one of those 12. how do you know that we can all trace our roots back to noah then we can trace all our roots back to adam what's the bible said about jesus he's the second adam those disciples are almost like noah in the ark from him comes who everyone that's here today came from noah These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh that I shall no more speak you in Proverbs. But I shall show you plainly of the Father. By who? That Holy Ghost. At that day ye shall ask in my name. And I say not unto you. And I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. When Jesus goes to be with the Father, now he's praying for us. Talk about an ultimate prayer warrior. How about asking Jesus, Jesus, will you turn to the Father and pray for me on this? 
before you run to men? For the Father himself loveth you. Oh, I got the love of God. Oh, I've got the word. I've got the Son. I'm righteousness by Jesus. He loves me. His love is not past tense, John 3, 16. I have believed on you. He loves me presently. Because ye have loved me. How do you want God to love you? You got to love Jesus. And has believed that I came out from God. Many people don't believe that. So there's no love the Father. The pursuit of all happiness is Jesus Christ. How's that? I came forth from the Father. And, and am come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. Acts 1. His disciples said to him, Lo, now speaketh thou plainly, and speaketh no proverb. Mm. They really didn't get it. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee? By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Not Peter denying him. Not when they heard that he's risen from the grave. Jesus answered them, do you now believe? Do you really believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. And there's a moment on that cross when the Father is not with him. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace, joy and peace by Christ. That's the fruit of the Spirit that Paul tells us. In the world ye shall have tribulation. How's that one? The world should hate you. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Not churches today. Many of them. They've joined the world. And it makes God sick. Revelation 4. 